Hi, this video talks about the principle of elastic collision. Uh, I've taken an example of a block colliding with a sphere. So let's look at the animation and the theory as well. The block is of mass m1, comes in from the left and strikes a ball which is of mass m2. The velocities have to be noted down before collision and after collision. So the block has a velocity v1 before collision and v1 dash after collision. The ball has a zero velocity before collision, it's just standing there and it has a velocity v2 dash after collision. All of these things are happening in the same line, in the same axis, in one dimension. The first assumption that we have to make here is that there is no friction or any other force acting on these two things. There is no friction between the block and that blue track on which it is sliding and there is no friction between the ball and the track as well. So in a perfectly elastic collision, the velocity of approach is a relative velocity with which the block approaches the sphere and the separation is a velocity after they move away from each other. In this still image, it's very interesting to see that the ball is getting kind of compressed. The round sphere is looking more like a rugby ball uh, as the block hit it. Of course, it's also a property of the air inside the ball and the material of the ball and how much it's compressible and so on. This is an exaggerated view. In this moment, the kinetic energy of the block has got converted and transferred to the ball as elastic potential energy. This is the mechanism of the elastic collision. The elastic potential energy then gets released into the ball as its kinetic energy and the ball shoots off. Let's look at an animation once again. The block comes, compresses elastic potential energy and the ball is off with its kinetic energy. At the end of the day, the final kinetic energy of that ball and the block put together is equal to the initial kinetic energy with which both of them started. If you have a look at the equations for an elastic collision, there are two things that are equal before and after. Before and after collision, the comparison is for the momentum and momentum is conserved as per the law of conservation of momentum. So you have m1v1 plus m2v2 is m1v1 dash plus m2 into v2 dash. The kinetic energy is also conserved and this is true only for elastic collisions. So plug in the kinetic energies half mv squared for each of the masses and velocities. Once you play with that and using these equations that I have indicated there, you come to a last line which says that the sum total of the velocities before collision equal the sum total of the velocities after collision. There's one way of looking at it. There's another way of looking at the same equation. And this is it. That the relative velocity with which the block approached the ball is same as the relative velocity after collision when the ball moved away from the block. What's happening here is both of these guys interchanged their velocities. The block was moving with V1, it came to a standstill. Okay, all that potential energy exchange happened. The ball moved away and it took on a velocity which is exactly equal to that of the block. So that's what you see here, that in an elastic collision, both the objects will interchange their velocities. Therefore, the block will be stationary and the ball will start moving with the same velocity as the block's initial one. In summary, there are three things to remember uh, in an elastic collision. Momentum is conserved before and after collision. Kinetic energy is conserved for the system before and after collision. The intermediate potential energy doesn't get into the equation at all. Lastly, they interchange each other's velocity. So before we switch off, uh, we take a last look at this and say bye to the block and the sphere. I hope uh, you like this. Thank you. Bye-bye.